Hello and welcome to another video on processing your photographs. The first thing I need to do is to apologise as I've been a bit tardy in coming up with something new. I have been training for a new job um, and working full time while I'm training so time has been at a premium I'm afraid. I've had precious little time for my camera and not much time to get to uh, Photoshop. But here we are today. And what I want to look at is moving on a little bit. We've we've looked at um, the basics of how to add a texture, how to manipulate it, how to turn it round, make it black and white, use more than one, mask bits out. So we've we've come quite a long way already. We've also looked at how to use another photograph as a texture, how to add a frame, etc. etc. What I'd like to do today is I'd like to look at one or two of the things I would do to my photograph before I add the texture. Um, one or two little processing tricks and tips. Um, and start to bring some of these techniques in together. Um, and, and see how they fit together um, to be a whole process. So first of all, I have my photograph open, open in Photoshop. Um, it's here on the right hand side. And I'd like to enhance this. I took this photograph with a vintage lens. Um, it was a, a Jupiter 8 50mm lens, um, a 2.8, so a very shallow depth of field. Um, and, and it renders colours very nicely and has given me a sort of watercolour feel, which I'd like to pick up on and, and enhance a little bit. And the first thing I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to use a curves layer uh, to do something which is known as crushing the blacks. So we go to New Adjustment Layer, Curves, and what it brings up is something that looks like a graph here with a line running bottom left to top right. Now what this is, where it's split here, this is your darks and your lights. And it goes from lightest lights, darker lights, lighter darks, and then the darkest darks. And you can do all manner of things with this um, with this adjustment layer. It's a little bit like when you're working with your shadows and highlights, but it's it's more so. It, it, it allows you finer control. And what I'm interested in is these darkest darks. The areas like this round here are really quite dark. And I want to see if I can move that out a bit. So I'm going to grab hold of the bottom of the line and just bring it up a little bit. And you'll see, I'll do it to the extreme. In fact, while we're here, let's just say this. Whenever you open something new in Photoshop, it's tempting to sit there and look frightened and go, what does it do? Grab hold of it and play around with it. If I take this and take it right up, you know, I think, oh, okay, it's taken everything away. Oh, okay, it's bringing it back. Oh, okay. And I start to see what it can actually do. But then once I've seen the extremes of what it can do, that's when I make my little subtle move. So we don't want to go too far, but we just want to take some of those blacks out. And if you see, just going there to there, around these leaves and around these raindrops, we've got a much more watercolour looking feel to it now. And I'm going to grab the middle and put a little bit of the mid-tones back in. Uh, and likewise, you can grab the lights and you know, make it glow until it, until your eyes bleed. Not that you'd want to do that, but just to sort of show you how it works. Right, so I've added a curves layer, and I'm happy that I've got a little bit more of a watercolour look to my leaves and raindrops there. What I want to do now is dip into another programme. I use Photoshop a lot, obviously. That's why the videos are on Photoshop. I do know um, there's one lady who follows the videos but she works on Affinity um, and Affinity is quite similar to Photoshop but I also use software from Topaz Labs which is something completely different it's, it's, it's a more creative suite of, of software and I'm just going to dip into the edge of it just with a plugin called Topaz Adjust. Now I don't need to move out of Photoshop for this which is brilliant but what I am going to do first is I'm going to flatten this, but I'm going to flatten it in a non-permanent way. So rather than saying layer flatten image, as we might have done before, I'm going to press, and please remember this, 
Control, Alt, Shift and E all at the same time. And what that's done on the left of the right hand side here is done so it's it's made what we call a stamped copy. So it's made a copy of these two layers flattened, but these two layers are preserved. They still exist there. And what I'm going to do with this one to make sure again that it's preserved is I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to take this one into Topaz. So I've got my original two layers, I've got a stamped copy, and now I've got the copy that I'm going to take into Topaz. So I can mess around in Topaz. If I don't like it, I can come back out and I can drag that layer away and throw it away and go back to where I was. So it's, it's all part of this non-destructive um, way of working. Okay, so if I go up to my filters, I can see under Topaz Labs, Topaz Adjust. And I'm going to click on that. And it tells me there I'm using Topaz as a plugin. And if I terminate the plugin, it, it will return me to Photoshop. And if you buy one of these um, Topaz plugins, you will install it onto your computer and it automatically appends itself to Photoshop so it's there as a plugin. It's just opening my photo, it's having a look at it, seeing what it uh, what it thinks. And there's my photograph. Now along the side here, down the right hand side, we've got some um, filters and I can choose one of those filters if I want to and um, just go with it. So let's have a look. Yuck, how awful is that? No thanks, I'll go back to the original. <laughs> or I can choose not to use presets and I can turn this off. I can have a standard enhancement, again awful, an HDR style enhancement. This is going to take a little bit longer. I've got a very slow Mac, I'm afraid. Here we go, little hamster running round on a wheel. <sighs> it's nearly there. And, oh, it's dreadful. As I thought it might be. So let's go back to the original again. And I'm going to go back to the presets. All will become clear in a minute. I'm going to go to a set of presets that are the soft effects because I happen to know that there is one called petals, which seems rather suitable for flowers. Click on that, it processes, it's added it straight away. Now, for me, that's a little bit hazy, but what I can do is click on the control panel in the middle and I've got the option to change all of these if I'd like to which is rather useful. Or I can choose, I, I quite like the whole effect, but not that much so. So like with textures, I've got an opacity slider. I'm going to take it all the way off. I kind of prefer to start without and put it on very gradually. So I'm looking mainly at the raindrops here. Slide it up a little bit just till I start to get more of a watercolour effect on these here. Um, and I'm quite happy with that now. It's just a little bit. It's, it's not enough to uh, be stark, but it, it is there. All I have to do is click apply, apply. It processes the photograph. And when it can be bothered, Gosh, I really need a new Mac. It takes me back to Photoshop. So what I'm going to do now, so I don't start to get lost, I'm just going to rename a couple of these layers. So that was my stamped copy. And this is my Topaz Adjust layer. And, and I can still further alter that if I want, alter the opacity of that layer. Um, or I can decide I don't like it and drag it away. But I'll keep it for now. So we've added a curves layer. I've made a stamp copy, copied the stamped copy and used Topaz Adjust to further bring out that watercolour effect. Now what I'm going to do, I think it's more or less time to add my texture. So we've done this before, we know how to do this 
File, Place Embedded, Navigate to your texture. I'm going to use one from my Basics collection and I'm going to use a black and white one because I'm quite happy with the overall colour of this, um, the colours on this one. I just want to add a little bit of texture. Soft Light, straight away it's added something. I'm just going to take it off and put it back on. It's added something to this quite bland area here and I quite like that but it has washed my flower out further. So again, thinking back to previous videos, I'm now going to add a layer mask so I can brush it away from the flower. You see how now what we're starting to do is to bring some of these techniques together so it's a whole process rather than just snippets of it. So there's my layer mask. Take my brush, resize, resize using the bra square brackets and I'll start to brush that texture away from the flower to bring the colour back out a little bit. Especially in the middle there. And I'm also going to resize, I'm not often very pernickety, but I'm just going to sneak up these little snaky bits as well. And there we go. That's it. That's the texture off there. And you can see here where I've brushed the texture away. I think I might just take the opacity down slightly as well for the rest of it. And having done that, I think there's one final move. Yes, I will. I'm going to bring all my layers together now. So I'm going to flatten the image. I'm almost finished. Layer, flatten image. And I'm going to take the sharpening tool, which is the triangle over here. I'm going to up the strength to about 30, 30%. I'm just going to go to some of these little quirky details and just sharpen those up slightly. You won't notice much of a difference when you do this, but it just serves to enhance those details a little, a little bit. There we go, and that's probably about it. That's probably about all I would do there. So we've now got a flattened image, sharpened, it's got a texture on. Um, we could add a frame, let's have a, well, we'll, ha we'll add a frame. We've done this before. Image, canvas size. I'm gonna add four centimeters on each side. Anchor to the middle and white. And there we go. So, that's brought a few of the techniques together. So we've added a curves layer. We have added um, a little topaz adjustment. We've added a texture. We've masked some of the texture off, sharpened a little bit and added a frame. It's an, it's an awful lot to do in one video, but if, you, if, if that seemed overwhelming, please go back to some of the previous ones where some of those techniques are covered on their own so you can get to grips with them. And if we'd like to just go back, I'm going to skip back to bridge um, and show you sort of what we've come from and what we've come to. So that's about it for this time. Um, I now have another three weeks of training so I can dream up something else to show you. Um, in the meantime, if there, if there is anything you'd particularly like me to cover, please leave a, leave a comment below um, and I'll have a look and see what I can do. Um, I have had a couple of questions about adding signatures, um, how you add them, where you get them from, etc, etc. So maybe, maybe I'll have a look at that next time. In the meantime, thanks very much for joining me and enjoy. <laughs>